So now we're going to look at some of the common questions and concerns that students have regarding part three. So close, yet so far. This is the final part of the IELTS speaking test. And for most students, it is a mentally draining and tiring endeavor. Even for a native speaker like me, I think I would be a little bit tired at the end of my speaking test because you're being hit with question after question after question and it's all in another language and it's a stressful situation anyway so students are going to be a little bit drained. To tackle this you need to know how long the test lasts. Do you know that? Do you know how long the test actually lasts for most students? Is it 8 to 10 minutes? 11 to 14 minutes? or 15 minutes and longer. Well done if you said B. The IELTS speaking test is quite short, 11 to 14 minutes. Are you preparing for your IELTS speaking test by speaking for 11 to 14 minutes? Most students take a couple of questions, practice a little bit, and then stop. That usually means they're speaking for five minutes, 10 minutes max. So their brain and their mouth and the muscles in their jaw are not used to speaking for that long. If you were running a marathon, you would practice, you would train by running the distance. You have to run on the day in the actual marathon itself, right? So if you're practicing for a speaking test, you must be comfortable speaking for 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less if we get 14, but you should be ready to speak English for a longer period of time than usual. If you don't, the risk is that you just get tired. And if you get tired in part three, it never ends well because part three is the most difficult bit of the whole test. You still need to be quite sharp you need to be switched on. Your mind needs to have some energy left in the tank for you to give your best English and score a high band. What happens is students get tired, their English gets worse, and they just want it to be over. They just want it to finish for this interrogation to end. So you need to be practicing for this length of time so you can deliver your best performance on the day. Preparation is key. Another common question uh, that students worry about is, am I doing well? Because I said that the examiner changes their questions based on your answers, a lot of students worry that if they get uh, more difficult questions, it's because they're not doing well enough. They're not giving them what they want. And that's not true. Remember, Going off topic is not a part of the IELTS speaking criteria, so sharing relevant information is all good. Um, it is part of the examiner's role to find your upper maximum limit of your English. That usually means that they ask you more and more difficult questions until you can't answer until you really can't make a coherent, developed answer, and then they'll stop it. They're trying to break you to find your absolute limit and give you an accurate representation of your English level. They may ask you more and more difficult questions because they are still looking for your limit. So actually, if you're getting quite difficult questions, don't think, oh God, they hate me. They want to make me fail. It means that they think you've got some more left in the tank. They've, you've got some higher band skills up your sleeve. So they're just trying to find your limit. They could give you a very difficult question that a band nine student can answer, but an 8.5 student can't answer. So they're just trying to find your limits. It's nothing personal. They're just doing their job and they're trying to find your absolute maximum level of your English so they can give you an accurate assessment. So don't worry about the questions. In fact, if you get a lot of 
increasingly difficult questions, you could take it as a compliment. <laughs> like it means that you're doing well and they are trying to still find your absolute limit. Um, finally, much like in part two, if you don't know anything about the topic, in this case, it's okay to be honest. You can admit that you don't know a lot about endangered animals. I don't know a lot about air pollution. I don't know many solutions about improving public transport. It's okay to be honest because the IELTS is not a knowledge test. It's only based on your language. So if you explain in clear English, I don't know much about improve, improving air quality, but I've read in a few news articles that some other cities have tried banning cars from the center of the city on the weekends. That's great. It's correct and clear English. That's what you need to produce correct and clear English to show them that you can still give an answer. You can still explain yourself in English. So again, it's not a knowledge test. Like in part two, share what you know. Share anything you know and it all contributes to your score.